Hello everybody, this is Albany Supreme here with another tutorial on how to program in Turing. So today we're going to be discussing arrays and how to use them. Now what is an array? Well, an array is just a way to make one variable equal more than one different values, which is very helpful. So right here I have I have a program that that uh, asks you for 10 different marks and then outputs the average. So I have 10 different variables for marks, which would make sense so that each can have its own value. But this takes up time for programming and it takes up space. And I'm going to show you how to simplify this using arrays. Right here I have the same total and average declarations, but I'm going to declare variable marks as an array of 10 different marks. So I'm going to make array 1, which is the first counter, and then 10 of integers. So what this is saying is this is an array that has... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different values. So now we're going to assign the array each value by making a for loop and then please enter mark i. Then we're going to get marks, and then in bracket i, and this is a subscript, which means this, this is the value that we're getting for marks. So then, total equals total plus marks i. And four. So, I just finished the program, because every time this loops, I'm adding a mark to the array up until 10, because that's the max, and then it just ends the loop and it goes here, average equals total divided by 10, and then the average is average. Let's see if it works. The average is 49.9%. Now, I'm not sure if that's the actual average, but you know what? I'll just say it is. So, 10 different marks, and then it outputs the average. That's the goal. So, we have, we have 10 lines of code here. You can see over here. Let's see how many lines of code the other program has. 35. And it works the same. So we just saved 25 different lines of code. We just saved 25 lines of code. So now I'm going to show you another way arrays can be used. They can be used as strings or reals or any type of variable. So in this case, I have a program that asks for the monthly precipitation for each month. And then it'll tell you which month has the most precipitation, which one has the least. So I have an array, it's called month name, that's an array of 12 different strings, and I have here a colon and an equals sign, followed by the word in it, one word, and then I have in brackets all the different values for the array separated by commas. Now they're in quotation marks because they're strings. If they were integers, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be. So this is saying that the first value of month name is January, the second value is February, the third value is March, and it goes all the way to, to December. Then I have a, an, an array of 12 different integers called month. 
then I have a number that equals 0, then I have a number 2, which equals 10 to the exponent 9, so it's a big number. So then it asks for the precipitation for each month, so it puts the month's name, i, so it takes a value from this array, and then you input the value for month, then it says if, if num is less than month i, then the number equals month i. And then big it equals i. That means it'll equal that counter. So then over here, the month with the most precipitation equals month name with the subscript big. So it says, so this says, okay, this is the biggest. So put month name big with a precipitation level of month big. It works for small too, that giant number. If it's greater than or equal to month i, then number two will equal that value that you put for the month, and then it'll equal i, and then it works the same as the big. The program also displays the uh, precipitation levels. So let's see if it works. So I made February and March. I made February the biggest and March the smallest, and everything else is going to be 44. The month with the most precipitation is February, with a precipitation level of 55. I remember putting that. The month with the least precipitation is March, with a precipitation level of 33 millimeters. Yeah, sometimes the text gets cut off and it doesn't have any of those lines that mean, uh, mean continue to the next line, or hashes, or anything. It just does that. So if there was a word, the other part of the word would be down here. So this reads as 33. Which is what I put. So, this concludes our lesson about arrays. I hope you learned something today. I'm Ogina Supreme, logging off.